Welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine and a show I probably should have done a while back. If there's one wine that is distinctly and inherently South African, it's Pinotage. It was a wine that was first made in South Africa as Cinso and Pinot Noir were put together to create what we now know as Pinotage. Now it's not only made in South Africa, there are little pockets of Pinotage dotting up in California and the Middle East of all places, there are a few Pinotages in South America as well, but inherently it is something proudly South African. And so why haven't I done Pinotage before? Well to be honest, and this might be something of uh, heresy, I haven't always been a massive Pinotage fan. Sometimes I've found it a little muddy, a little heavy. It just hasn't done quite as much for me as other wine. But I bumped into Guy Weber at the Julian Cullinan Wine Festival a few weeks back. He gave me a bit of a lecture and reminded me that we are making some exceptional Pinotage at the moment. And we're also making a range of Pinotage, not just the more traditional, bigger, bolder, stronger Pinotage, but also some more cool climate style, lighter Pinotage that pays uh, rich tribute to the, the Pinot Noir side of things. And so this week, I've decided to bring in four Pinotages and to showcase exactly why South Africa's trademark grape, when done right, really can be exceptional. We start with a wine that I reckon is most synonymous with Pinotage in South Africa, along with probably Kanonkop. And Kanonkop is where Bayer's Kloof was born, I suppose, because Bayer's Truter, the man who started Bayer's Kloof, was the man responsible for the Kanonkop Pinotage before. Now, Kanonkop Pinotage is outstanding, but the Bayer's Kloof Pinotage has become iconic in South Africa and their various versions. There's the trail dust, there's the wine that Bears makes for the Cape Winemakers Guild. Uh, across the board, some really outstanding Pinotage. Uh, but I think this will do the trick nicely. It's not an overly expensive bottle. It's about 140, 150 Rand or so uh, for a reserve Pinotage that comes from the home of Pinotage in South Africa. I think that's fair enough. And now Pinotage has had its detractors. Jancis Robinson, who is to wine commentary what Richie Benno was to cricket commentary, pointed out that for her it had the unfortunate habit of occasionally smelling a little bit like paint. But much like Chenin Blanc, when drunk at the cheaper end of the scale, can put you off for life, so cheaper Pinotage really doesn't do the grape any favours. But when it's made with a little more care, a little more time, and under the astute hand of somebody like Bayer's Truter, you're then getting Pinotage in all its glory. And that is a great way to kick off our week of Pinotage. It's lots of bold fruit, lots of ripeness with that slightly smoky, husky background, sort of Grace Jones singing quietly in the back somewhere. It's a really nice combination of, uh, of flavors and of, uh, of palate. Uh, it's a, a reasonably complex one, not overly so, but you can feel there are a couple of different things going on at the same time. Uh, but mostly it's got a, a lovely combination of fruit and uh, although it's still fairly young, already it sits very smoothly indeed. Uh, Bayer's Truta is the godfather of Pinotage, much as we might say Ken Forrester probably is for Chenin Blanc, for example. Uh, and what Bayer's has here is just yet another good example of why he and Pinotage will always be synonymous. Then on to a wine that arrived on my doorstep a couple of weeks ago, and uh, if you're the very sweet but terrified gentleman from DHL who dropped it off, uh, my apologies. My bull master of Stavros wasn't trying to eat you, that's just how he says hello to people. But thank you for dropping off the wine, and thank you to Dan, and I'm not sure if it's Freita or Frater or Frater, uh, we'll just call him Dan, and his family wines who uh, sent this up and asked if I'd like to try it. Uh, and I'm always happy to try out new wine and to see what people are making because there is such excitement and such energy to the South African wine industry uh, and it's always fun to see when people are doing new stuff. Uh, now as I understand it, uh, there are a new range of wines that have been bought out, the, uh, uh, the vineyard, the estate's been around for a while now, uh, and this is their, uh, their Opar Bull Pinotage Reserve, uh, is one that they hold in, uh, in quite high regard. So I haven't tried it, but I'm certainly looking forward to it. So John Roberts is the latest member of the family to be making the wine at the Freiter, Frater, Frater family vineyards. 
and this is a wine that's named in honour of John's grandfather who uh, used to whistle in his truck on his way to work and uh, clearly left many great memories behind and uh, I always love it when there's that little bit of a backstory to wine. In this case uh, it is John Robert paying tribute to his grandfather, his uh, Opar Bull and naming the wine after him. And I've got no doubt his grandfather is looking down proudly. Would he enjoy a glass in hand? Let's try. I think Opar Bull would be quite happy with that. It's uh, quite light for a Pinotage. It's uh, not quite as full bodied a wine as the, the one before, um, but it's very smooth. There's some nice soft tannins to it. And uh, it's uh, again, a nice example of, uh, of Pinotage. It's the first time I've come across this estate, but I suspect it won't be the last. Then, not for the first time on Dan Really Likes Wine, to Elgin and Spionkop. Now you already know about Kuhn, the mad but wonderful Belgian who makes the wine out of Spionkop. We tried his Riesling a few weeks ago as part of the epic wine route I take on each year. We were down at Element House at the stage. Uh, here we are trying his Pinotage and uh, it's a Pinotage I've actually had a fair amount of. Uh, my problem with Pinotage, uh, the reason I didn't always like it, that slight heaviness, that slight murkiness to it, is not seen in this at all. It's a much lighter version. It's the, the cool climate style, which from Elgin is what you'd expect. It's a, a far cooler area uh, and it's an area that lends itself to a different style of wine. So think Pinotage that uh, thinks it's Pinot Noir and you're kind of heading in that direction. So the suggestion that this is a Pinotage that thinks it's a Pinot Noir is enhanced by both the colour, you can see it's lighter, it's rustier, and also the alcohol volume. This is just 12%, so it is very, very light indeed. Throw in the fact that it's from Elgin, and you can imagine that you're not going to get a big, robust, broad-shouldered style Pinotage. Uh, this is more your cravat wearing, has a monocle, uh, wearing Todd's, and uh, a lot more uh, postmodern, I suppose, for want of a better term. And indeed it is, and in fact, if you've got a picture of the guy wearing his Todd's and his cravat and his monocle, throw in a cigar as well, because there's that real whiff of cigar that comes through this. Uh, it's a nice, smooth uh, uh, wine. It, it carries all the way through. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely a Pinotage, uh, but it's a Pinotage in a very distinctive style. And it's not a style I'm adverse to. Uh, I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. Uh, I just think that depending on what you feel like drinking, uh, one might suit the occasion uh, better given the, the particular time. Uh, but what Kuhn's made here is a, is a really fun Pinotage. Uh, it's a softer Pinotage, it's a lighter Pinotage. And if that big, broad-shouldered red wine isn't to your liking, then maybe this is the Pinotage for you to try. And then to our final Pinotage this week. And this comes from Nettlingshof. Uh, interesting times at Nettlingshof. It was a joint venture with Destel. Destel have moved on, so it's back to the original family owners. And uh, I spent some time with Devet Villeneuve, and we had lunch at Marble, David Higgs's masterpiece in Rosebank. And we ran through what is called their short story collection. And it's wine that is named with reference to the history of Nettlingshof. And like many estates in the Stellenbosch area, Nettlingshof has been around a fair while, and so they've got plenty of points of reference. And this one is the Owl Post Pinotage. And like all of the short story collection, it's got a pretty good story. So the short story in question here, surrounding the name, the Owl Post, there was a problem with rodents, rats in particular, at Nettlingshof, and there'd always been owls on the fringes of the estate. But they brought in some owl posts, attracted the owls in, and if you go out to Nettlingshof now, you'll know that the owls are very much a part of the furniture. They do a great job, they keep the rats at bay, which is important in terms of ensuring that the vines are kept in good health, but it also adds a, a really cool element to the estate, where the owls standing guard and now very familiar faces at Nettlingshof. Now, this Pinotage has got some heritage. It was named uh, one of the world's best Pinotages in an international competition a few years ago. Now, granted, there are many competitions, and one takes competition victories and stickers and awards uh, with a certain uh, degree of uh, circumspection. Uh, 
but it's uh, still an indication that around the world this is a Pinotage that has got uh, a great deal of applause and a great deal of credit. Uh, and I did taste it with the winemaker, uh, David Villiona, a former rugby player of some renown, now making wine. His rugby was pretty good, but I think his winemaking might be even better. The previous Pinotage, very much the lighter, cool climate Pinotage style. Uh, this is more that Bayer's Treater style. It's a bigger, more full-bodied, robust wine. It's not overbearing, it's not overpowering, but it's a nice, strong, rich red wine. And that's how I think uh, South African Pinotage uh, was first introduced to the world and, and first really caught the eye. Uh, I think there's a place for both of them, uh, but this uh, especially as we sit in a South African winter is a really, really nice way to celebrate South Africa's very own grape. So there's your selection. If you haven't had Pinotage before, uh, then Bayer's Truter is your man to kick off with uh, his Canon Cop heritage moving into his Bayer's Club time. Try out that Canon Cop as well. It is outstanding. Something uh, a little new, something I hadn't come across, uh, the uh, Opar Bull. Uh, I think uh, another year or two uh, won't hurt, uh, but it is drinking uh, very nicely indeed for now. Spoon Cop, that cooler climate, and then this, uh, I think the pick of the lot uh, uh, for today, the short story collection from Neertling's Off. But a nice range, South Africa's very own grape, and maybe I just need to give Pinotage more of a chance. Enjoy. <laughs>